I was curious what, if any, friendship or, you know, um, any kind of relationship you have with Ochefu and Ryan Archidiakono on the other side, and then do you feel any kind of kinship with them being seniors, all four of you guys playing out your career here on this final stage? Yeah, I definitely can relate to them on a lot of levels. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Ryan Archidiakono and Coach Wright have a similar relationship that me and Coach Williams have. I was uh, Daniel Ochefu's roommate at Nike Global Challenge uh, my senior year on the Nike circuit. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm not real close with him, but we're we're friends. And we have mutual respect for each other. And then me and Ryan played against each other a bunch my senior year in high school as well. So uh, we were, you know, among that group of point guards in my class that always competed against each other. Uh, we're actually, we get along really well every time we're around each other. Uh, when we got to the salute uh, with Jim Nance on Friday, no, Thursday night, I think, um, we got to, a chance to catch up a little bit, and that was cool. Like, when we step on that line, in between those lines, though, all that goes out the window. I, you know, you, we've talked about how you guys start out slow and then and like the second half it kind of dictates the pace. But it's worked. I mean, is that kind of who you guys are now in the game plan or, or what is there to perfect at this level when you have one game left? Yeah, I think when you're playing good teams, which obviously we've been playing for the past several weeks, it's hard to just assert your dominance on them from the tip. Um, because they're trying to establish their style of play, their tempo as well. Um, but we feel like with our depth and with, with, with the way we keep going inside and keep trying to get things to go our way, that it takes a little bit of time uh, during the game to make that happen. So it would be great to get out to a big lead early and just keep that. But uh, against these really good teams, sometimes it takes grinding it out. You know, a team that plays a shorter rotation might get tired, and then we have a chance to really assert our will in the game. So. Uh, you know, if it goes that way again Monday night, I'll be very happy. So what is there to work on? Uh, to work on? Yeah. Honestly, we just have to play, you know, our defense has been good enough in the tournament, uh, but it hasn't been quite at the level that it was in the ACC tournament. So I think if we can just clean up on the defensive end, uh, you know, obviously not shoot over 10 in the first half of three or anything like that, but we're getting the shots we want inside and out. Uh, so I think defensively we just do a little bit better and get a little bit back to that level that we were at maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, then uh, we should be all right. You mentioned your relationship with Coach Williams back in the room when he was asked what a third national championship was a huge deal would mean to him. He said it's about the players, it's about what it means to them. That's where I get my joy. So I'm wondering from your perspective, how much would winning this championship be about giving him something back? Yeah, uh, like he said, uh, I'm pretty sure he doesn't think, he probably spends zero time thinking about, you know, his legacy and stuff like that. Uh, he, this is the kind of guy he is. He loves coaching his teams, and he puts all his time and his effort and his thoughts into how he can help us. Uh, and by that same token, I think us winning a championship for him, you know, kind of vaults him into that next stratosphere of, of coaches when you look at big picture, when you look at accolades, when you look at, you know, comparing Hall of Fame coaches. You know, there's not that many that have three. So I think it'd be very special to kind of get him up on a whole other level, um, even though he probably wouldn't even think about it in that way.